God, dependable God, always there. Thank him for answers again to our prayers this morning. Thank him for the wonders of the last five weeks. Give him glory and praise. We owe him thanks. We must pay our debt. He's been very gracious to us. Give him glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. We are just a privileged set of people. God loves us so much. He manifests himself to us at will. Whether we call for that or not, he just does it. Awesome God. May this move result to your flight. Amen. It shall be said, what is that fly as a cloud? May your place not be missing. Amen. May you succeed to get on board this flight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord to speak to you this morning, everybody. I want to hear from you, Jesus. He opens my ear money by morning. He opens my ear to hear. The Lord has opened my ears and I was not rebellious. Now, ask him, Jesus, open my ear this morning. I want to hear the word in season and thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. It's so and it's done. It will be your greatest week till date. It shall be your week of reign of favor. I say it shall be your week of the reign of favor. Every of your secret labor shall be speedily and openly rewarded. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand and please get seated. Again, welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Now, 2 Thessalonians and chapter 2, verse 13. We are bound to give thanks. Always to God, we are bound to give thanks. When things are working, we are bound to give thanks, lest it stops working. When things don't seem to be working, we are bound to give God thanks, if they must ever walk. Amen. So I call it we're in bandage of thanksgiving. <laughs> we are bound. Amen. Amazing results. Give glory to my name. Otherwise, I cause your blessings. So we are bound to give thanks. Malachi 2, 1, 2, 3. And now, give thanks on time, oh, not just some time after. Jeremiah 13, 15 to 17. We are bound to give thanks for things that are working in order to keep them working. So for everything, give thanks. Ephesians 5 and verse 20. Now, when it don't seem like working, we are bound to give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For that is the will of God in Christ concerning you. And after you have done the will of God, you obtain the promise. So, we are bound to give thanks when the promise don't seem to be made manifest. We are bound to give thanks for them to be made manifest. Amen. Five loaves, two fishes. Father, I thank you. And then, the word came alive. And food descended in baskets from heaven's kitchen. We are bound to give thanks when they don't appear sufficient. And then Lazarus was dead and stinking and Christ had prayed, I believe. And then he got to the place and rolled away. He's stinking by now, my friend. He's stinking. Let's forget about that. He will rise up on the last day. Roll away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and gave thanks. Father, I thank you. And then the dead came back to life. 
So we are bound to give thanks for what may not be working to start working. We are bound to give thanks for what is working to keep working. Praise God. You better make that your personal responsibility and take that responsibility on every issue of your life. You want things to work? Give thanks. You want things that are working to keep working? Give thanks. We are bound to give thanks. Everything works here, so we are bound to give thanks to keep them working. Whatever may seem like not working, we are bound to give thanks to make them work. Say with me, I'm bound to give thanks for everything working in order for them to keep working. I'm bound to give thanks for promises yet to be obtained if they must ever be obtained. I'm bound to give thanks always to God. Bound to give thanks always to God. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. As far as church growth is concerned, thanksgiving is a covenant driver of church growth. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be mediocre. I will. I will. But I need thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry for me to keep doing it. Praise God. I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will also multiply them, and they shall not be small. Glorify them, and they shall not be small. Now, the greatest enemy of church growth is Satan. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious growth of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Paul said, 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 18, he said, I will have come again to you. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. So Satan is the master machinator of opposition to church growth. When Israel was first becoming a nation, by reason of her population growth, all hell broke loose to stop her just as the gates of hell are all out against the growth of the church today. They began to afflict them. But the more they afflicted them, the more they increased. We have all of that in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 7 to 14. This is why the church must engage and continue to do so in spiritual warfare to prevail against the devil and his agents. Luke 11, 21 to 22. When the strong man, fully armed, keeps his good, or keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when he's stronger than he, he shall come against him and overcome him, he takes away the armor, the armor in which he trusts and then allows his captives to go. So it's warfare. It's warfare. It's warfare. He said, give no place to the devil, so stop him. How do you stop him? By resisting him steadfastly in the faith on the altar of prayer. Amen. Taking the sheet of faith and you quench all the fiery darts. So it has to be continuous. Therefore, whatever cannot stop the child from praying cannot stop the church from growing. That young man with those eight prayer uh, manuals engaged an hour daily in the secret place of his room and God openly rewarded him. It was only this year. You know that. We gave those things out only this year. That in case some people don't have it and don't have access to the internet, now, let's give them. Some have kept them since that day. I've not checked it once. Some can't even tell where they put it now. Yet, somebody's story has changed. So dramatically. Within weeks. Within weeks. 
within weeks, truly, God who sees our engagement in advancing his kingdom in secret has vowed to reward us openly. May you receive grace for secret investment on the altar of prayer in the name of Jesus. Before she traveled, she brought forth Isaiah 66, verse 7 and 8. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child who has had such a thing, who has seen such things. Shall the be made to bring forth in one day, or a nation born at once? But as son, as Zion, travailed, she brought forth her children. So we are looking at why must we continue to pray for church growth? In our covenant hour of prayer this week, one, the reason, church growth is warfare. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And some of these gates will not give way, except by prayer and fasting. Matthew 17 and verse 20 to 21. Why could we not clear this devil off our path? He said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Verse 20, because of your own belief. However, in spite of your faith, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. No wonder we are in the fast once every week, forever in this church. So when are we going to stop? We are not going to stop until we see Jesus. We will occupy that position till he comes. Amen. Because some kind of devils will not clear, except by prayer and fasting in our engagement to enforce the advancement of his kingdom. So, if the church must keep growing, we must go to put up a fight of faith to disarm the enemy and release his captives. Fight the good fight of faith to enforce the agenda of heaven. First Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith so as to lay hold on what God has ordained. You are called to engage in a fight, not watching, not explaining away. You are called to engage in a fight, a fight of faith on the altar of prayer to enforce a turnaround as ordained of God concerning any subject of interest, particularly church growth. We should expect rewards or engagement. It's not a robber, that testifier said, but a rewarder. It's not a robber, but a rewarder. I slept as a prisoner last night, as a nobody last night. I woke up as a wonder. It's only God can do that. The things that only God can do, they are the things that happen to us when we obey him. So engage, 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 engage. Don't toy with these things. Obedience is where our life is. And let me tell you one blessing that comes along with it. A car that is not in use gathers dust naturally. There is nothing you can do about it. You keep a car outside there for one week. Don't try to lean on it. It will mess your dress up. But the one on the move dispels the dust as it goes. So being on the move delivers from defilement. You need time for the devil to have his way. Now you don't have the time. So how will he have his way? Occupy till I come. Change your story from the corner of your room. By engaging in kingdom and prayer prayer as a lifestyle. And then God continues to change your story. Now, how long you've been here won't matter. But where you stand in the truth is what determines the events of your life. Amen. 
in Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 18, we saw the next blessing that comes from being occupied. He said, by much slothfulness, the building decays. We are God's building. 1 Corinthians 3.9. We are God's building. He said, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. And through slothfulness, a building decays. Through idleness of hands, the house drops. You want to retain your redemptive beauty? Occupy. The third blessing of being occupied is in Matthew 12, when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he goes about in dry places seeking rest. When he could not find any, he said, let me go back to where I was living away from. And then he came and found it swept, garnished, but empty. Empty, swept, garnished. <laughs> Nothing going on. So he went and took seven other more wicked demons than himself. So now let's go and invade that place. Let's come and chase us out again and fortify our presence. The later end of that man was worse than the beginning. These are three major blessings that withdraw from being occupied with spiritual things. Being occupied with spiritual things. Programming kingdom advancement as a lifestyle. Engaging in the execution of the plan with delight. It keeps you from decaying. It keeps us from being infested with devils. Amen. It's awesome. And it keeps us going forward. By the hand of God. Stand to your feet. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Amen. You know the interesting thing about this church? This little exhortation resonates through all our churches worldwide. The same thing is being said this morning everywhere, from Australia to Asia to Europe to America. Why? God is bringing all of us on the same page. The eruption has started. And it's going to continue at a higher rate. You will not be left behind. You shall 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 not be left behind. Not be left behind. He told everybody, pray without season. Now he's talking about kingdom of prayers. You are not a needy. Now you, you know, you have anything, you have any need, ask me. I'll give you. So why must you be praying all the time for yourself? There's nothing to pray for yourself. You are out for my kingdom. If you call for anything before you finish calling, I've answered. Lift up your two hands and receive grace for effectual maintenance of your prayer altar. Effectual sustenance of your prayer altar. God is changing people's stories from the corners of their room. He wants to change your story too. God is opening new doors to people from the corners of their room. He wants to open doors to your life too. Lift up your two hands and take it. You are not among them that will decay. You will not gather dust. No. You will not suffer defilement and infestion of devils. Take grace from God this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. You know, he said, and the number of your days, I will fulfill. So it's his covenant insurance for longevity. You serve me, amen, even till old age. I want to keep you fit because the laborers are few. So if you are enlisted as one of the laborers, I'm committed to keep you here for long. 
Aren't you glad you're going to be here for long? Aren't you glad you're going to be here for long? Serving the Lord in strength, in color, and in glory. Amen. Now, speak to the weak. It's your week. This week, heaven will hear you. As you go praying for your new converts, praying for the converts of the church, praying for the needs of those around you, and minister their needs as you are enabled. Speak to the weak. Lord, make it a week of a new spiritual orientation for me. A week of a new spiritual orientation for me. A week of a new spiritual orientation for me. A week of new spiritual fire in my soul. A, new of, a, a week of sustaining the prayer fire in my corner, the corner of my, my room. So help me, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Don't forget what was taught yesterday. Take advantage of every opportunity of anyone in need among you. You do good to all men, especially they of the household of faith. Galatians 6.10. Otherwise, you are enlisting yourself as a needy. It doesn't matter what level. Be part of putting a smile on somebody's face. And you never lose your smile. You never lose your laughter. Be part of doing that with joy. Don't eat everything you have. If you eat the seed from the fruit, you won't have nothing tomorrow. Everything in your hand contains both the seed and the bread. Don't eat the two. It's a risk. Share with someone. Be part of somebody's joy. And watch how God will keep adding color to your life. Now, go in peace. The week is declared your week. <laughs> no mishap. No regrets. No concerns. It's a week of spiritual advancement. A week of divine open doors. A week of rewards for your labor. A week of changing levels. Come on now, it's your week. It's your week. Your prayer life is changed. Your prayer altar is on fire. It's your week. Come and give the Lord praise. Give him a big clap of praise. Give a big clap of praise. Lift your hands now and give glory to God. Appreciate him from the depth of your heart. He's worthy of praise. Is worthy of glory, is worthy of honor, is worthy of all adoration. Celebrate him. Do that both in the spirit and in your understanding. Give him the praise that is due unto him. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We celebrate you. We glorify you. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. And you are worthy of honor. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. You are blessed. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do.